Christopher Chia has been incarcerated 10 times in his life and has spent 26 of his 47 years of life involved in gangs and drug activities. Chris met his wife in 2017 on a Hong Kong exchange program. They found each other again through a dating app and continued to talk and meet up. They have since been married for two years now. Every time after I re every time I go inside prison, I say I want to change. And when I come out of it, I change. For the time being only. So turning points are numerous in my life. But this is the one time which I stayed the course, that I kept my word. During these eight months inside DRC, my wife was very supportive. She sent me a card and a photo daily. I have a ton of them. I can feel that through the letters that my wife had written to me, I could feel angst, a feeling of loneliness, uncertainty, because um, she doesn't know when I'll be released. I just feel that when I get out, I would not let this happen again. I would not let her feel the same way again. Chris mentions that due to his past of being in a gang, he has become apathetic towards his loved ones and struggles at times to show emotions and concern towards them. I remember the time when I was um, serving my sentence in a foreign prison, which is Malaysia. And my mum would come and visit me every week. So she would leave at 5 a.m. in the morning, take the first train, and subsequently the bus all the way to um, Kluang in Malaysia. And she would visit me for half an hour. And then she would, have, and she would take the three, four hour journey back again. So that time I told her, I said, Mom, you don't have to come every week, you know. Her reply to me was, it affected me very, very much at that time. And um, it was difficult for me because inside prison, you know, you, you, you can't let your tears roll down. You know, uh, you are, you are, guy, I mean, I'm a guy, I'm in the, I'm in the gang, so you, we just don't cry, okay? Um, she said this, boy, you are my son. Wherever you are in the world, I will come and visit you once. So that statement of hers really, really touched me, really, really affected me emotionally. So at that time, I was uh, affected very much by her, her love, by her dedication, by her sacrifice for me, her only child. Okay, and it's only people that I really care for that can really affect me uh, emotionally, that I can get angry, you know, I can get pissed. Uh, uh, with them, with myself, you know, with the relationship. I know that there's a better way for me to express my emotions. Well, I'm still learning. Probably it's because um, <clears throat> from my past uh, as a gangster, I was even a hitman. So it, it's this tough exterior, you know, that, that prevents me or uh, from showing my emotions to them. I think this is a barrier or a wall that I've built up around, around myself over the, over the past few decades so that I would not get hurt emotionally. But then this wall has also prevented me from showing my emotions to the people whom I love. For ex-offenders, their lives can often take on a vicious cycle. We will never understand them until we live the lives that they have been through. But Transformation for us ex-offenders is not a one-time thing. It's a continual process. So until the day we die, I like to say this, until the day we die, then we can truly say that we have changed our life. Don't get complacent. Be humble. Know that you have uh, made a mistake and move on from there. I think it is never too late for an ex-offender to change or for anybody to change their life, to seek a better life. So it doesn't matter how many times you fail, just get up and start moving on.
the motivation for me now to stay the course, right, is the fear of losing any more time. I feel that I have not enough time to leave a positive legacy. For Chris, it is a constant struggle to stay on the right path. Societal stigma towards ex-offenders is often the biggest barrier to reintegration. Due to this, ex-offenders often face difficulties in securing jobs, public housing, and sometimes even face vigilantism and social isolation. This may lead to the rebound effect on society and cause a rise rather than a drop in reoffense rates. He has worked as a human resource manager in 2020 for a social enterprise after his release from prison. While he was the HR manager there, he took it upon himself to employ ex-offenders. After leaving this position, he has worked as a videographer for a church and is currently a social work executive and counsellor for prison services. And it's always been my goal to become a social worker, uh, focusing on um, helping ex-offenders rehabilitate and reintegrate into society. So I believe that my new role with Lakeside Family Services allows me to do just that. And being an ex-offender myself, um, well, I think I'm best suited for this job. Chris stops himself from relapsing by cutting off people whom he deems not beneficial to him and his goals. He does this to stay away from temptations. And so I find, I proactively find this community. I volunteer with organizations that help ex-offenders. So these ex-offenders and I, we come together and then we support each other in this new life of ours. I also go to church. I'm also involved in religious fellowship. And this is the community that I need to build around myself to help me in my transformation journey. So these people will help me not to relapse. To all ex-offenders out there, um, you got to make a choice when you come out from prison. So it's either you're going to cut away your old friends or you're going to make new ones. So it's your choice. So my advice to you is if you want to change your life, if you don't want to be where you were before, make the decision to cut away your old friends and find new ones. Surround yourself with positive-minded people and never forget that if you look for if you look at the right place for the right people, they will be there for you. Look for me la. I'll tell you to cut your friends off. Oops. <laughs>